this has remained hidden for a couple hundred years at least, probably more now. But for tens of thousands of years, you know, we believed. And all of a sudden, when everyone and everything went into hiding, that's when we no longer believed in the tangible type of mag magic. There is physical, tangible magic, and there's non-tangible magic. Non-tangible magic is easy to do without being noticed. Tangible magic is very obvious. So what has survived in our belief? The non-tangible things, the things like visionary work, the things like um, healing and cleansing rituals and things like that. Because that's not something that you, should, you can usually physically see. Um, it's not like telekinesis, it's not like um, shape-shifting, it's not like anything that would be physical. You know, it's not like being able to prevent a bullet from hitting you in the chest. I mean, with a, with a protection shield. Uh, you know, the type, the type of protection shields that we do now, mostly, usually, are, are, are not that strong. Um, you know, burning somebody just from when they touch you as a defense mechanism. You know, things that you think would, would only exist in fairy tales and things. And that non-tangible stuff is easier to believe because of that. So it's to two reasons. Easier to hide and easier to believe. That's why that type of magic has survived in the knowledge anyway. Um, but several tribes across the world, not just in one area, but across the world, have never stopped believing in the tangible magic and have continued to practice it. Um, they, if you ask them, they, they believe it like, like we did hundreds and hundreds of years ago. They have a special relationship with that. And basically, they know the reprimands had they reveal it to anyone else. So, it's the idea that it is hidden unless you are worthy, if you can prove your innocence and that you're worthy of seeing it. Meaning that you wouldn't jeopardize anything. You know, you wouldn't tell the wrong people about it. The very few moments in history where someone or something got noticed when it was meant to stay hidden, terrible things happened. Either they were found out by sort of neo-Nazi type or pre-Nazi type people and slaughtered. Or they were scooped up by scientists and experimented on. Luckily, what ended all these witch hunts, and it's not just for witches, it's for anything that they thought might have magic. So they were going after animals and even regular road animals. They go after, even if they didn't, they would still go after them in the precaution that they might have magic. And they wanted to annihilate everything. So after going into hiding and you've got a couple hundred years plus under your belt of not witnessing anything anymore, that's kind of how these, all these things stopped. People stop believing, and when people stop believing because they don't see anything, they don't witness anything, then they don't feel threatened anymore. They feel no need for those witch hunts. If it was revealed to the world that it was real and everyone knew it was real again, you'd like to think that people change, but they don't. We would have everyone and everything in jeopardy again 
you know, if everyone knew this kind of stuff existed, if everyone had proof of it, you know, we'd be right back where we were several hundred years ago, where people and animals alike were being slaughtered by the millions, you know, it's just maybe even billions, I don't even know. Um, magic is powerful, but it it's not all powerful. You cannot defend yourself against everything. Um, and so yes, it's it's very important that the wrong people do not ever realize it's real. Um, because there's, there's, there's too many of those wrong people right now existing in the world today. I'd say at least half, if not more than half. So, the other reason why people searching for proof that might be worthy of it, but don't find it, is because they're looking in the wrong places. This is actually, I was told this a long time ago. I actually had met someone who belonged to one of those tribes. And we were talking about the kind of magic that exists. And I was very young, I was a child still, so I was saying, well, I'm looking, but I'm not finding what you've asked me to find. And she said, <laughs> that's because you're looking for all the right things in all the wrong places. Human society, sometimes you can find it in humans, but most of the time it's not. You know, I, I was looking in human society and not in nature. Most of the time, that is where you're going to find all your answers, is with nature. Now, that doesn't mean that magic doesn't... Tangible magic can't happen and doesn't exist in human society. I'm living proof that it can. Um, it's just a lot more rare. Because even if you have potential to, say, shapeshift physically, you're not going to be able to unless your mind body is so balanced and strong enough you've got to have very strong balanced chakras the soul is what dictates the body not the other way around if your soul is weak in any way so is your body and to physically shapeshift that takes so much strength to do that your spirit cannot be wounded in any way because a weak spirit means a weak body. The majority, the vast majority of humans have very unbalanced chakras, so their bodies are very weak, even people with the gift to do something like that, to, to do some kind of tangible magic like that. You may have potential to, but you will never succeed until you're balanced. All your strength comes from your spirit. If your chakras are imbalanced then your spirit is weak that's just how it works the stronger you are the more balanced you are it's kind of how it works i cannot explain it it's just kind of a rule of the universe and a good thing too because the more imbalanced our chakras are especially certain chakras like heart stomach um you know things like that i mean the more potentially could lean towards actual sinister evilness and it'd be terrible wouldn't it if an evil being or person stayed strong so i guess that kind of makes sense that that's kind of a law of the universe but anyway moving on that's another story for another day um there's no easy way around it you kind of just have to you know this so many times you know you look and you, you, but your eyes are closed shut tight and you say well I'll believe it when I see it so really you're not looking it's that constant thought in your head like I know this isn't real and I'm not even gonna try even though I'm trying <laughs> and you have to push that aside for a moment you have to push your skepticism 
aside for a moment, hush it just long enough. It's all right to say, I'll believe it when I see it, but you've got to at least have your eyes open at the same time. You have to walk into this without any assumption one way or the other. Take away the assumption it's not real. Also take away the assumption it is real. Take away both assumptions. So that you're left with nothing and you completely, um, you know, just neutral. And that's the moment you should go and search for something when you're neutral like that. When you get yourself into a... Um, because if you're not in the right mindset, even if you do witness something, even something very profound, and I am guilty of this myself, you will die and play it and you will find a way to explain it. You explain it away. And the elaborate explanations for why it's not real sometimes is less believable than it actually being real. But you will convince yourself that those explanations make sense. Um, you're going to have to have more than just you there. You're going to have to have somebody else that either confirms it for you most of the time by telling the, you that they they know it's real as well or they saw the same thing or something like that um, because that in these day, this day and age is very helpful to, especially to people who are struggling with the belief factor um, you cannot just look in the right place you've also got to be worthy of it too even if you come with pure intent but you would tell somebody if you have potential to tell somebody um, it could just be that you would only do that if you're drunk but it doesn't matter even if you've got potential to tell somebody period you may never see proof of it so typically you have to be trusted with that secret uh, if they want anything to reveal to you then you also have to uh, um, either be of magic yourself or at least someone who's willing to protect it to protect the secret of it for me I'm a shapeshifter but I would never show proof of shapeshifting because of that right there it could fall into the wrong hands and I'd rather you believe I'm completely 100% insane than me show proof of it to try and prove a point because of I know what what would happen if people realized that it's real and that would be far worse way just I mean than, than, than somebody just calling me insane so you do just kind of have to at the end of the day you kind of have to just kind of realize okay there was a real reason to hide we were getting hunted to death and if these things are of magic, they probably have magical ways of hiding. For example, illusion, very powerful illusion that may even, you know, be so strong that it's not just that you see an illusion, it fit, you can touch it, it feels like, for example, perhaps maybe a dragon um, is trying to create the illusion that they are a, a tree or a riverbed or a pile of stones. And not only does it look like that, but you go to touch it and it feels like that. Very, very powerful illusions and even that can exist through death. So that these illusions, if anyone ever finds the bones, their bones look normal. They look like a normal animal. Um, Shapeshifting is another way. Uh, fawns can look 100% human. They can look 100% animal. Or they can look half animal, half human, which is the way that they're known for looking, but, you know, they have that ability to shapeshift, and they will use that ability a lot of times to hide. Um, so, it's just, it's either something like that, a tangible way, or a very profound, strong way of, of creating an illusion, or it's just a, in general a um, protection, a very strong shield of protection, like a warding that wards off anyone that's not meant to see it. So that's how it's there, that's how it stays hidden without any proof of it actually being there.